So let's start with the sky on this painting. I'm going to uh, pre-wet the sky. And since I'm working larger than you are, I'm going to use this big two inch brush. It's a hockey brush, H-A-K-E. Uh, obviously it's Japanese. Um, but I'm going to water, let's get this wet all the way down to the side of the uh, barn. I'm using 100% rag, arches, uh, rough paper. Um, nice thing about 100% rag paper is it stays wet a lot longer and you can play with it and adjust colors a lot longer without worrying about it starting to dry and, and possibly giving you blossoms where you don't want them. Um, now for the sky, I'm gonna use a little bit of, uh, let's see here, let's just test this. Use a little bit of cadmium red I'm going to put a little bit of violet with it. And uh, it's just kind of a warm color. Maybe a little more red. And if I get it too red, what I can do, if it just seems too pink, uh, it's in the red family. So what I can do is I can take just a touch of sap green, which is the, is the complement to red. And I can just kind of gray it down a little bit, take a little bit of that brightness or red redness off of it. That looks pretty close right there. So let's just start here. So again, it's pretty wet so I can sweep across. <clears throat> you always wanna use the biggest brush you possibly can. Um, you don't wanna try sneaking up on your painting by starting with small brushes thinking you've got more control and it's gonna turn out better. What's gonna happen is it's gonna be very, most likely, has a much better chance of being overworked, too many strokes. See, I can go back back and forth over this because I pre-wet it, and I can just keep playing with this big brush. But I wouldn't want to do this with a smaller, medium-sized brush. So what you want, what we want to do also here is you want to pre-mix the tree line back there. And I could have done that, should have done that. What I'm going to use for that is I'm going to take some burnt sienna. Some burnt sienna, I'm gonna add some ultramarine blue to it. You can see in the reference that there's more burnt sienna, burnt umber in here, so it gets a little darker over here, maybe some uh, ultramarine blue added. And right in here, it may not show up too much, but I got a little bit of phthalo blue in there. And it's just kind of nice. It kind of brings a little bit of this blue into the background. But I want these colors to be rich, but I wanna put them in while this is wet. That way it goes soft on the top. I don't want a hard edge at the top of the trees. So you gotta lay this in wet on wet. My paper's really quite wet yet. And uh, remember, I'm on a slant, about two or three inches slant from the back to the front. So I know where the washes are gonna go. If you, have, if you lay it flat, your colors and your pigments can just kind of go in all different directions. And uh, we definitely, with these trees, we don't want these trees creeping up any farther than, than we have to. So here's, basic color for the trees back there. I'm using a big round brush here, about a 10. Again, I'm on a slant. So because of that slant, it's not gonna creep up any farther than, than I wanna, wanna have it go. Carefully paint around the barn, top of the barn, the side of the barn. And I can go to a little bit larger brush, which is a mop brush. And uh, I really like these mop brushes. This by Creative Mark, it's called the Harmony Squirrel Quill, and it's a uh, number six. So I'm going back in there and hitting a little darker. If I go dark around this building, the building, the barn's gonna really pop out more, which is nice. And remember also that watercolor goes, uh, dries 20% you know, lighter or so. What's nice about this mop brush is I can fan it out and I can come in here, indicate the tops of trees while this is still wet. So it's still soft, but uh, it gives me a lot of control and it gives me a, a random pattern here as opposed to using a round brush and maybe filling it in. Cause I do like to see some of the background peeking through. So I can just kind of 
play with that. What I do is I take the brush, I drag it towards me, take it vertical, and give it a quarter turn. And if, as long as you don't have too much water in it, it'll fan out like that, and it works great for the tops of trees. So let's come over here. See, this is still wet, nice and wet, because it's rag paper. I'm going to actually throw a little raw sienna over on this side. And I'll do the same thing over there. I'll fan this brush out, and I'll come up here and just play with the tops of those trees so it's not just a straight line across there. So kind of a random trees and, and uh, soft, but you can tell that they're that's the tops of the trees. Now I'm going to go a little darker on the right-hand side that you can see in the reference. This is where it's got a little more ultramarine blue. And then right in this area, I threw in some phthalo blue. But let's get the ultra in here first. Again, you want to do this with a big brush if you can. Otherwise, things can start drying on you or it can get too overworked. So now I'm going to grab a little phthalo blue. And it's a it's a nice color. You gotta be careful you don't overdo it though, because the eye is gonna go to that if you use it really, really strong because it's such a such a powerful color. So it's gonna mix with these other colors in here, so it's not gonna jump out as strong as it would be if it was on plain white paper. Um, you put that on plain white paper like this and look at the intensity of that. So we're gonna lay it in there nice and soupy. Everything's still wet, S slowly starting to lose its sheen, uh, sheen up in here, the shine to it. I want this to be a little bit darker at the bottom over here. So again, while it's wet, I can go in there and throw that in. That's more burnt umber, maybe just a touch of ultramarine blue to, to make it uh, a little darker value. And you could do this painting several times and every time it's gonna look a little bit different. And uh, See what I mean about that brush being fanned out? It, uh, I can, but I'm barely touching the paper, just the tips of those hairs on that brush. It looks strange, but it really gives you a nice texture. But you gotta be really gentle with that when you put it in there. Let's come over here now. Again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna fan this out. And come in here. Now see, this is still a little shiny here, still wet. But it is starting to dry. So in other words, these aren't gonna spread out as much, these strokes, as they would if I did it down here where it's still real wet. But you can just give a little bit of detail and not get carried away. You don't do like an initial wash of the entire thing, say, and then when that's all dry, go back and and do the rest. No. I, I see a lot of painters do that, but um, that always is, that doesn't work for me very well. It, uh, no, that's just that's just not my way of doing it. I mean, there's so many different ways of doing it, but uh, no, I I'll keep that whole area soupy. Drop the trees in and play with the colors on it. Uh, and then, then I'll let that dry, and then we'll go to the next section. But uh, now, while my still has a sheen on it, while it's got that, I'm going to take a brown brush, about an eight or nine, ten brown brush. And I'm going to splatter clear water on it, and I'm, and I'm not doing this wrist action. I'm going up and down from the elbow, and just draw and splattering and moving around as I splatter. And that'll give me a nice texture in there. And you can see what that's doing over in here. If you get a little bit in your sky, that's fine too. But it's really nice to break that up with a little splatter of clear water. We've got clear water on the little brush. Yeah. And you can see what that's done. See if I look, if the sky looks light, well, I took a piece of my test paper, scrap paper laid it up against that tape and you can see that, that sky has got about the right value to it right there is a there is a, a painter's tape that comes about the color of that sky but i haven't been able to find it um, 
So this blue blue tape can be a little distracting. It, it doesn't bother me, but I've had somebody mention that. Yeah. But I can't find uh, the tape that color. So once you get to that point, then you can go ahead and dry it. Some of the same colors we used on this tree line, we will be using around the barn on the left side and a little bit darker on the right side. So um, just, mm -hmm. just know that you're going to have to mix that color up unless you were able to save some on the side of your palette. Um, if you got a big palette, you can find a spot to put it in the corner somewhere. But uh, it's a fairly easy color to mix up again. You can see that texture the water goes to. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna clean out uh, part of my palette. I'm gonna leave some of these earth tones on there because um, I can adjust to them or add more pigment to them if I need to. Uh, if you got a small palette, it's hard to do that because you need to have enough room for your sky. So now I'm going to take some clean water, a clean brush, take some ultramarine blue and create a puddle on my palette. I say, I always save any painting or anything that works, that doesn't work out, save all those. If nothing else, they make great test sheets. Um, and, uh, save, save you having to uh, use a scrap piece or something. I have lots and lots and lots of scrap paper. <laughs> I, I, I was just, I I was just gonna lot. say the same thing. <laughs> I used to have a lot of them, but yeah, I, I finally bought a pad of really, really cheap paper. Uh, like the, you would never want to paint on this because it's too thin, but it was only, I think it was 60 or 90 sheets for like 20 bucks. So I figured I'll, yeah. I'll buy that and use that. But so what I've got is I've taken ultramarine blue, blue. it's got a touch of phthalo blue in it. In that family, anyway, right? Like that. Oh, I see. Okay, well, let's do this one here. So it's water, it's ultramarine blue, it's a little bit of phthalo blue with it. Um, phthalo blue is just a, a kind of a pretty color, uh, especially when you, uh, the blues, period, are kind of a nice complement to the oranges that are in the barn, because uh, that's the complementary color. So it's, it's kind of nice to have a touch of that in there. Um, so this next section, you can see it follows the bottom of this, of this hill in the background, and then it comes straight. There is a road, there's a dirt road, or let's say it's sort of a, a berm or a, a, a built up road right there. And that leads into the side of that barn. Um, that's why there's this little value here. It's showing the side of that hill that's built up there. But we're gonna do this blue here Okay, and we'll just do this first. Let's just take care of this section. So we'll put the blue in like we did at the top. We'll put the blue in first, and then while it's wet, but not super wet, we'll drop in these burnt sienna, burnt umbers. Lay, lay them down in this corner over here and just let them explode up. So if you want a nice color in here, get the value right, but we don't want it uh, creeping all the way up to the top. We want to kind of keep it right in this area. Obviously, as you can see, there's a little bit stronger blue here that helps define this hill in the foreground. Okay, and then we'll kind of do the same thing on the other side. There's a little bit of blue showing here, but we went darker here. So we can add more burnt umber, uh, more ultramarine blue to it, along with the burnt sienna, and, and make that really jump because that's in the shadow area. Oh, so use whatever brush is comfortable to lay in that area. And you can paint right over top that tree, the big tree. We're not gonna paint around anything here. The tree is darker, we can make that work. Are you gonna wet that section first with plain water or just um, the paint? I'll tell you what, I didn't plan on it, but I'll, I'll, I will do it in this case, just so that you 
No, you can do that. Let me just come in here with some clean water. And I'm gonna start up above where the blues go. So I'm gonna start up here higher. That way it'll creep up and it'll blend. It won't give me an edge up here farther, farther up into that hill. So you wanna paint carefully around the, the barn there. I've got a puddle in there, then follow the hill. So I just wash it up even beyond where you know the blue is going to go. But again, we're going to drop the blue in. And while that blue is still wet, we'll come over here in this corner and we'll drop in these burnt sienna burnt umbers. I mean, raw, burnt sienna burnt umber in here. So mine's, I'm going to lay my blue in right now. And if, if you're not, if you're too flat, it might go up too far on you. So just be ready if you need to, to tip the front of your board so it doesn't go way up too far on that. So I'm just going to come in here with my blue. Again, use, what the, use the biggest brush you can that you're able to control. And just something like that. And I might, I might fan this brush out a little bit like that and just make a sweeping, really quick dry brush stroke across here just for interest. What I'll do now is I'll just take a wet brush and maybe just calm that down a little bit. So it just kind of confirms the shape of that hill. It's got a nice round shape to it and some of it. So I'm going to come in here with my burnt sienna. A little bit of burnt umber. Test that on my test sheet. So do I like that? That's pretty close. I think it could be a little more burnt sienna, not quite so dark. Now that I'm looking at this, I actually I, I see orange in here. I'm going to put some orange in here, and then I can add more darks as I go this way. So I'm going to get grab some cadmium orange. Again, go from the palette to the test sheet. I like that. Okay. Remember, when you put these colors in here, that blue is going to calm them down anyways. It's going to neutralize them quite a bit. So I'm just going to start with my uh, this burnt orange here. Add a little bit of, little bit of burnt umber to it. Come in here and paint along this, carefully along the side of that barn. Did you mix that cad orange with your burnt sienna? With the, with the, yeah, it's pretty much went to cadmium, just a little bit of the uh, burnt sienna in it. I want to make sure it stayed to the orange in the orange range. Um, so now I'm just dropping pigment in. I'm just letting it drop off my brush on here to create that shape. I think I want it a little bit darker right here at the bottom. Right by the building. So I'm going to take a little more blue with my ultras, of my, I mean, with my browns, and just drop in a little darker value right here. Just build up that corner. So I'm just kind of watching it. Yeah, I think that's good. All right. But I'm going to bring some of that same blue. You can see just a little bit of it peeking out here. I think I'll put a little bit more of that hill color in here, that blue on the side of the barn. Yeah. It's a small area, so I'm not going to pre-wet it. You can if you want to. Um, if you feel like it's going to dry before you get it softened. I'm going to come from the top with clear water so it doesn't have a hard edge up there. Just kind of drop it in here, knowing that the darks are going to go over top of this now. So. I don't have to worry about any of this over here. I actually put a touch of a phthalo blue in here too. That's just kind of a nice bright color. <clears throat> well, that's wet like it is right now. I'm gonna come in here with my dark earth tones, my burnt sienna, burnt umber, smoldering blue. Just drop these pigments in there. That's pretty dark. So I'm just going to dilute that a little bit. 
I'll add some more burnt sienna to that. Okay, I'm gonna go more burnt sienna with a touch of orange now. The light's hitting it a little bit up in this area, so I can just kind of, a lot of times I'll lay the brush right flat on the side too, because that gives me textures that I wouldn't get if I was using the point of the brush. And I can also take a round brush that fans out pretty well and uh, take it like this, drag it towards me, take it vertical, give it a quarter turn. If it doesn't fan out, then it means you get too much water. Just drag it again, take it vertical, fan it out. When it looks like that, then you can get in here and you can play with these tree branches or what leftover leaves that are on the trees here. And you may have to fan it out several times while you're doing this area. Very, very gentle, soft touch to it. So I wanted a little more orange on the top because too much the same value. So I'm taking some cadmium orange that's on my palette with a little bit of the browns in it. And I'm just kind of laying in here, it's loaded up with paint. I'm just kind of dropping it in here because I want to have a little bit more of that feeling of orange near the top where the sunlight could be hitting it. Might even come in here and do a little splatter right in there. And if you let the colors kind of do their own thing, let them run, you can see this nice little area right here where these oranges that I put in there are kind of running down, creating these interesting shapes in the dark area. So you look at it, you got, you got the, sort of an orange color, you got burnt sienna, and you've got some burnt umber. Actually, it wouldn't hurt to put a touch of uh, violet in there too. That'd be kind of nice. Then that touch of blue coming from the other side of the barn, bringing some blue into it. If you wanted to, you could bring a little bit of, you could splatter a little water in here, but we don't have much on your brush because I don't want that to be too strong like it was up here. I'm just going to really get close and barely let some of the water come off the end of my brush. And also when I look at there, there's some dark splatter in here. That's, that would be the burnt sienna burnt umber combination. Um, and I'm going to do a little splatter of that. Now I noticed in this, it looks like I did it when it was completely dry. Let's just see what happens if I do it while it's damp. I think it still should, some of the areas near the top should still hold their shape. The rest of them will just add a value shift in here, which is kind of fun to look at. If you get some areas you think, oh, that's too dark, just have a paper towel ready and just kind of Tap it and lighten it a little bit. What happened in here, you can't paint that with a brush. You have to let the watercolor give you something like that. That's really kind of a nice little gift right here, what you can get at letting the watercolor, getting out of the way, let the watercolor do its thing. Because there's a nice variety in here. Okay, I'm looking at the painting I put down. I'm looking at this hill in the back, and I'm looking at that value of that hill right there. Um, I don't use this very often uh, because I, I know hard enough, uh, well enough that I don't need to, but it's a great tool to have if you have issues with values or, or your paintings not having enough range and values. So I'm looking at my hill back here, and that hill's at the most in between these two colors, these two values. So I'm taking my print here and looking at it and going, wow, it needs to be, it needs to be pushed way over into this range. And what that'll do also, what that'll do is that'll set that hill farther back and give a, a more of a feeling of distance. So I'm going back to my ultramarine blue. I brush out here. 
and I'm going to revisit that area. And here's how I'm going to do that. Let's so get a clean color. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm going to start right over here at the bottom. Lay that brush flat so I can get a nice wide stroke. I'm actually going to go right over this stuff over here, the trees, like that. And I'm going to rinse my brush out real quick and straddle the top of that so it blends right into the hill. I don't have any edges up here drying. So now I'm going to look at that and decide, do I need to push it a little bit more? And I think it'd probably be good to do that. So I'm just going to take a brush. This is all wet now. So I'm just going to take the blue and drop it in at the base of the hill. Now I've got a better feeling of depth. It's lighter up in here, and but it's getting down into this little ravine area. And so it's got a nice, uh, a nicer value to it. It really makes it stand out from the hill in the foreground. Very value thing. I got a lot of hard lines in my um, snowy area. So. Up in here? Up in this area? Yeah, yeah, really bad. Okay. Um, what kind of paper are you using? Arches. Okay. Is it cold press, rough? What? Cold press, 140, yeah. All right, it's kind of hard, but if you've got a round brush, I mean a flat brush, that's uh, somewhat stiff, a lot of times you can come in there and uh, take a flat brush with water and you can break it up. Soft oh, okay. So stay in one spot and work it until you think you've softened, done all you can do. Yep. Just in, in, in not, not a blade, but turn it a little bit sideways or use the corner of it and go back and forth, back and forth, and then tap it. And you can get rid of a lot of those hard edges and, and certain papers are a lot harder than others. Um, Archer is a little bit more of a challenge, but you can do it to a, to a pretty good degree too, so. Um. Oh, I did one. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So yeah, just take a brush, a flat brush or a round brush and get in there and just work it back and forth. Don't tap it until you think you've done all you can do as far as loosening it. And sometimes what I'll do is after I do that, I'll take a paper towel like this. Yep. Let's just say I got this area wet. I'll take it, go like that, wipe it right off. So when everybody's got this hill in here done and they don't have any wet areas, let me know and we'll work on the fence post and a couple of these trees over on the left side. I take uh, my small, my small round brush. It's a number four round brush. I'm going to put those fence posts in first, and uh, they're they're not brown. They're going to have some Payne's gray in them. They're, they they've aged quite a bit, and they they aren't going to jump out as brown. And you know, they you could have a hint of burnt umber in it, but basically, it's that's going to be more in the gray family. And we don't want to go black, really pitch black with these fence posts. They're off in the distance. Everything goes back in, in space, gets lighter in value. So just find a medium range value. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right down in here. Here we go. Let's see one here. Try to do it in one stroke if you can. Now there's the next post is up. And they don't all have to be vertical either. These, these fence posts, you know, go in all different directions. So as they age. They settle. And uh, so don't overthink these. Try to do them in one stroke. Make sure they go smaller as they go back in space. Back up that hill, they got to go smaller. And there's some in the foreground here at the base of that hill, too. I'll put those in while I'm waiting for those to dry. I'll put these in here, too. If your fence posts aren't in the same spot as mine, it doesn't matter. If you were able to save some of your blues, it's kind of nice because you can come back to those when you realize, oh, I could have, I could have done the side of this uh, this berm area by the by the barn. I'm going to lay a little blue. Blue in here. Remember, that's a ramp that leads up to the barn here. So we don't want to see. I don't want it to be see how hard that edge on, on top is. I don't want that. So I'm going to rinse my brush out. 
come from the top and straddle it. And that way it'll go soft. So now I've got that in there, but it's not jumping out at me. A little darker, I just drop some color in the value in the corner. Okay. And when you've got to the point I am right now, let me know and we'll go to the next step here. So I'm pretty much gonna mix the value of this hill at the bottom. I want it to be about the same value and about the same color. Because what we're gonna do is we're going to anchor these fence posts to the hill by a, having a cast shadow on them. Because right now they're just kind of floating out there. So we wanna, we wanna ground them. Okay, I'm gonna throw a couple, a couple of these uh, shadows in here. Okay, now you gotta to conform to the shape of this hill. Okay, so I don't, I don't wanna make straight lines coming off here. I want them to have a little curve to them and that will accentuate that hill right there. So I'll just start out here and it's quick strokes. Don't spend any time on it. Go right over top of the tree, make them at least twice as long as the uh, post is itself. Looking at it, now it's a little bit light, so let's just hit it a little stronger. So now they're anchored to the ground. Look at the contrast in there. We want the shadows in there. We don't want, don't want them to compete with the fence posts themselves. <coughs> so it can't be that dark. Is anybody ready for some trees yet? <coughs> yeah, yes, I small, am. Small trees over here and here. Oh dear. Okay. Sure. Burn umber. <laughs> burn umber a little bit of ultramarine blue, so it's not too too brown. Burn umber. And that's where your test sheet comes in handy. You look at that and say, okay, that's pretty close. Is me? I am. Sandy is. Okay, so, oh, that's right. I remember that now. All right, so for me, I turn it this way, and I and I hold the brush like this. I don't want the brush like this. Now, I don't want it coming from this side like this. I want the brush to be dragging like this. It's so much easier to come in and do this stroke for these trees. Okay. So as a right hander, figure out what works best for you. All right. You did them from the bottom up. I, I'm good. Yes. Yes. Yep. Because if you start at the top and come down, then you got to slow down and, and try not to go onto this hill. Uh, carefully create the, uh, the base of that trunk. So I'm just going to get that in there. And I'm looking at that. As soon as I lay it in there, I look at it and say, okay, that's just uh, that's too dark. I'm going to add a little more burnt sienna to it. I always have a paper towel somewhere within reach if I feel like I need to tap it and calm it down. Okay, so I'm going to get the basic shape in like that. Then I'm going to load my brush up. And then I'm going to just go for it, just like this. Okay, here we go. And I'm going to push the brush down hard now because I want to match that thickness. And then I'll let the press light up on the let up on the pressure as I go higher. So here we go. Down. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've yeah. got that there. I'm just going to do this one next to it too. Let's get it down to the hill here. Match the brush down and then let up on the pressure. And I, I stack my fingers, as, as a lefty, I stack my fingers like this. So these yeah. two fingers are writing on the paper. That way I've got complete control of the height of the brush going up and down. So as a right-hander, it would be, be this way. So you, stack these two you stack these two fingers, that's kind of your, your anchor right, right there. And this, br this brush rides on the on top of the third finger. So I would, I would be coming like this as a right-hander. So I'm looking at what I did here. I've established where the tree is. I'm looking at it and say, well, it's not as dark as the one in the, my reference here. So I'm just going to hit it, hit it a little bit darker. Yeah. Then I'm going to 
twirl my brush on my paper to get excess water out of there. And what that also does is it lines the hairs and gives you a nice sharp point. So now I'm going to go in here and uh, just add some of these other branches that are in here. Again, resting my hand. I'll adjust the tree if I need to on the way. And I, I call it what I call, I call it a sort of a stutter stroke. I bring these branches in, I come in, hesitate for a second, and slightly change direction. In other words, I don't want to go like this. Like this, slightly change direction. And their branches are going to look much more realistic. Now, as a left hander, I start at the trunk and go out to the left. As right handers, you're probably going to want to start at the trunk and go out to the right. I do the exact opposite. Yeah, I'm just gonna put some more of these branches right in here. And they don't have to match up. Don't slow down and try to get them exactly where I've got them. It doesn't matter. Light touch, and then just let it put a little more pressure on it as you come towards the tree. On the, for right-handers, you'll be on the other side of the tree. Light touch so the branches are nice and thin. Okay, I'm gonna come over here like this. Cross down in here, connect with this tree. Eventually, you get to the point where you can put them in really, really fast. And the, the faster you can do it, the more natural and believable they're going to be. So I'm looking at my reference. I don't have to. I don't have to slow down and try to match these trees stroke for stroke. So I'm just incorporating these into here. Let's just kind of put another one here, maybe. Maybe that goes up this way. Again, I can come in fast. Um, but that's a great thing to practice is trees. Get, get some tree reference. If you got an iPad or whatever, go online and look up trees, look up photos of trees, and then just you know, practice just drawing a branch or two and just see that how they actually are constructed. It'll make your trees much more believable. I, I've got probably probably 30, 40 trees in an album because I never know a certain kind of tree I might want in an album, whether it's a cypress tree or, or who knows what. Um, but at least I go in my file and I can get them. But once you do this, and once you get really comfortable with those, you can paint trees and not even have to dig out your reference unless you're looking for something very specific or very unusual. Awesome. Okay. So I'm just going to make some quick strokes up in here. Sometimes the quicker you go, the better they're going to look. I've got another little one that's over here hanging out. Let's put that in. This is a smaller one. And sometimes the branches may not even connect with the tree. That, that doesn't matter. The eye will connect it. Okay, that's pretty good. Because we're going to have some branches from the big tree that are going to come in here and overlap these trees. I'm going to take that a small brush. I'm going to take some burnt umber, a little bit of ultramarine blue to get it dark enough. I'm going to put some of the darks in here in this orange brown area. So let's just go for that. Let's just see what we got here. I'm looking at that, is that going to be dark enough? I think I need a touch more ultramarine blue with that. Now, I didn't necessarily start it right here at the bottom of this brown either. This tree, this tree or brush or bush can come out of the middle of this brown area. So it's kind of just disappears into that section right there. 
This is where I'm using my little script brush. Um, and this is great for, for really fine detail. I think it's it's kind of worn off, but I think it's the number one. Yeah, I think it's the number one. I rarely use it, but for something like this, if you want delicate little branches or trees in an area, uh, it's great. So I'm going to have them come out of that brush and come up into the blue area a little bit, up into the hill. And they're not quite dark enough, so I'm going to add a little more ultramarine blue to it. Back in and hit the trunks, the main branches, biggest branches. Okay, that looks pretty good. So when you've got these trees in here, let me know, and then I'll show you the next step here. We have a very strong light source. You can definitely tell that by all the cast shadows here. So the light, the sun is coming up here from, you know, I always kind of picture a clock dial over my painting. It looks like the sun's sort of coming from like, you know, 10 o'clock or so, heading down to about four o'clock. If you keep things like that in mind, that'll help you get your shadows right. But I want to take my half, my quarter inch flat brush with clear water. I want to give some dimension to these trees here. So I'm going to pick the brush pretty vertical, and I'm just going to work on the left side of the tree and then tap it. And now all of a sudden, it's giving some dimension to that tree. We can tell where the light source is coming from, especially up in here where it straddles the background here. You don't need to overdo it. You just need to do it enough where it really separates it. It comes off a little harsher on the screen, the monitor, than it is in person here. And I'll do a little bit maybe on the one on the left, but uh, not much. I don't want to go white, white with it. I want it just to be, be there, but not be too strong. You go all the way down the tree, like the entire thing, or you skip some? No, I, I, just do, I just do sections to break it up, make it interesting. Sort, sort of like this is here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. But you want to be careful. You don't make them all a half inch. You know, you get some small areas, you get some larger areas, and, and then just let them fade off. But that uh, definitely gives some dimension to the trees. It helps give a slight indication uh, where the light's coming from. And once you get this value on the side of this burn here, this blue on the side of the uh, entrance there, you can put those fence posts in then too along the top of the hill here. If you want to, you can put a railing or something on this fence post if you want. It doesn't matter. It's just a little detail. You might want to put some. You don't have to. Very thin brush. OK, so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the barn. I'm going to the trees are a little closer. And they're not coming out of the gray bottom. They're coming out of the, sort of in the middle of this area. So the trees are disappearing into the brush at the bottom. So just find a brush that's about the right size to lay those tree trunks in. Um, this is a little darker value, so I'm going a little bit darker uh, pigment here. Um, a little more ultra with it. So I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to try to make it quick strokes. Maybe I can even get some lucky and get some of this dry brush effect in here. <laughs> it all depends on the texture of your paper, whether you can get that, uh, but you got to definitely have to go quick to do that. And I may get it or I may not. So it's kind of like a hit or miss thing. But since I'm a left-hander, I'm going to start over here and work towards the barn. Right-handers, you can start right here at the barn and work your way out, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to start with the smaller trees here, a little bit smaller brush. Let's just start in here. Okay. I can just kind of let that blend right in there. 
I'll put another one over here too. As you can see how they just kind of disappear into here, which is nice. Now I need a, a little bit bigger brush now, <clears throat> put that thicker one in the bigger tree of the group. So I'm going to start out, I don't want to paint each side of it. I want to try to do that one stroke. So I'm going to mash my brush down hard enough so that I can get that thickness right there and then let up on the pressure as I go up. So. And I did get a little of that dry brush in there, but I think since the shadow's on the right, I'm just going to kind of fill it in a little bit right there. When that's completely dry, I'll probably put a light wash in there. I don't want to lose that texture. So I'll put a light wash in to, to finish that tree off. So now it's just a matter of adding more small branches. There's a tree over here coming out of here, it goes off the page. You can tell I'm, you can hear my fingernails running across the paper. That way I've got a good anchor. I'm really anchored well with these two fingers. For right handers to be these two fingers. That way I really have control of the height of that brush. I don't want to start a tree out and all of a sudden it gets fatter as I go up here. So that, that anchor really helps. So I'm just going to slowly start adding branches to the tree. Here I stroke some branches in there and even connected to the tree and that's that's fine, you know. The eye will finish it off. We know it's connected. So I appreciate the areas that turned out well, knowing that uh, if you did it again, you would, you would change this, you'd change that. I mean, that's, that's just part of the game. It, uh, it all falls together. The more you practice, the better you'll get at it. And, uh, all right, let's run this one off the top of the page. These trees on the right, the same thing we did on the smaller ones on the left. We can uh, pull out the light areas on the left side, and that will give some nice dimension to them. Just don't make them all the same size. There, but. 
Now these trees over here on the right, see if I want them to have a little more of a spark to them, what I mean by that is I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife. Oh dear. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna hold it fairly flat to the paper. And I'm gonna lay the point down. Oh, and drag it and scratching the surface on the left side, on the sunlit side. But look at look at that sparkle it gives you. Wow. So it's better than trying to go in there and think, oh, I need some light in here. I'm gonna go take some white paint and, and, and play with it. No, don't do that. Take an exacto knife and, and uh, come in there and do that with it. It's really and this is actually this works great too <clears throat> if you're doing coastal scenes with water, the ocean or something. You can get that sparkle on top of the water by horizontal strokes in there. Works really well. I just take a, a you know, round brush with just a little bit of water on it. And if you want to kind of close it in a little bit, if you feel like that the, uh, the dry brush is too much, you can just take some water and you can fill it in in spots. If, if you feel oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that would help mine. <laughs> but you, you can see the, uh, the exact nice with the light hitting the tops of these branches. The, you can hear it. But yeah, I love that. Yeah. And it, it's, it's something you can't do with white paint. Gives you that nice. Yep. But this, yes, it's kind of a nice thing to do. It's just a fun thing to do. Like a sparkle. Yeah. Watercolor doesn't have to always be frustrating. Often it can be, but <laughs> it doesn't have to be. I'm going to do a little splatter in here too. I didn't do it on mine. Um, I haven't got to that point yet. Let me just take a round brush. And uh, let's, let's see. I gotta wait for my water to come back. My assistant's getting slow here. Ah, done. Well, my husband brought me a cup of tea and changed my water, so. Man, man, you hear I that? Nance? his dinner too, so. You hear that, Nance? <laughs> no, I don't want anything. I got, I got my hands full here. I'm going to take some burnt sienna, maybe a touch of orange with it, and uh, mostly burnt sienna. And I'm just going to do a little splatter over in this area, like it is on the reference here. I'm just going to come in there and just splatter that and leave it alone. Yeah. It's amazing how it just takes on a life of its own. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know there's, there's times when uh, that's good, and other times you got to rein it in. Well, I probably need to be reining in some, but I'm yeah. having a great day. Yeah, I, yeah, but I'd rather see that than the opposite, where it's so tight and controlled. This is kind of bare up in here right now. So I'm going to come in here, and you can, you can do it this way, or you can do it like this, hold it like this, and tap it in the middle and get the splatter to come off. So. Um, I'm going to try I'm, gonna, I'm putting a piece of paper here to protect the barn, you know, just in case I get wild here. Oh, right. Then I, I roam around as I do it. I don't stay in one spot. And I just do a little bit of that. And then I'll take a brush with more control, a round brush. And I'll kind of pencil in some shapes or play with some of these shapes that look a little bit more leaf-like. More feeling of distance or depth. Um, but uh, just be careful that you, you keep your pattern very, very random. You don't want to, uh, to look obvious that you were spacing things out. And I might do just a little bit over here too, just a little bit of splatter. Okay, so that kind of settles that. In. So we're taking it step by step, background, middle ground. Um, now what we do is we're going to go to the barn. And then we'll come to the foreground. So it's one, two, three, four steps, um, as opposed to having washes all over the place and feeling out of control. It's just much easier, and you can keep it fresh and loose, and uh, and still have control of it. So I'm going to clean my palette out a little bit, get some of these earth tones out of here. So I'm going to spray it with my sprayer. Just notice we've got trees over here. I didn't put those in. Trees coming off the page into the scene here. So let me go back to my burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt umber. And I'm going to put some of these trees coming into the page and off here. So 
There we go. That helps. That helps the scene to it. Uh, brings another element into it, into the picture. Here. I'm going to go a little bit darker here where it's over a darker value. So I have a little more ultramarine blue to it so it shows up. So I'll do a little splatter up in here too. So I'll go back to my orange, my burnt sienna. And it's not real, real opaque. It's watered down quite a bit. I'm just going to come in here and tap it on my, test it on my, do it on my test sheet first. See what size the drops are. See if I'm, that's what I want. And if I like that, then I'll come into the painting and I'll protect the hill if I need to. Just come in like this and just give it a good hard snap. Um, then it's, it's a more of a random pattern. And that's what you want. You want a random pattern. I'll come down into the snow a little bit here. Okay, we got to pick up the pace here a little bit. All right, let's, uh, let's do the bottom. So I'm going to use Payne's Gray. The left side of the barn is going to stay pure white. It's getting hit strongly by the sun. So I'm going to take ultramarine blue for the right side. I mean, I'm going to take Payne's Gray and I'm going to put... Uh, let me just try that. I might just go paint gray. Let's see what that does. Again, I'm going to use a decent sized brush so I can fill that whole thing in. All right. So I'll tweak this as I go. Um, and once I figure that out, then we can, uh, can all run together here. So. Okay, get in here. And... Okay, there's, there's paint gray by itself. I'm going to go black under underneath the roof there. That's why that's ragged. It doesn't matter there. Okay, that's not too bad. I think I kind of like that. Let's scan. You didn't wet that barn, did you? Nope, didn't wet it. We don't need to have it too dark either. Um, because that is is the focal point, so we don't want it to disappear into the scene here. So, I'm going to take that same value and do this underneath this overhang over here, where the roof overhangs it and creates a shadow there. So I'm looking at that and thinking, okay, that's that's fine. I don't mind that. It's a, it's a one flat color. So why not take a little bit of diluted uh, burnt umber? <laughs> just while that's damp, just throw a few strokes in there. And look at how that adds interest to that. What's kind of fun to do since that's going to be orange at the bottom here, I'll, I'll just take a little bit of orange and just shoot some of that up into here. And it kind of gives the impression that uh, the barn maybe was painted one time or rust or just, just gives it an aged look to it. Um, yeah, so I like that, that's good. When I get all done, that's gonna dry. I'm probably gonna say, oh, okay, that's not quite dark enough. And if it's not, when it's dry, I can lay another wash over top of that. Then we'll come in and put the darks, the broken boards, what we're seeing into the barn. Um, a great tool to have uh, for making straight lines is a five gallon paint stirring stick. Okay. This is wonderful when you really need to have control. Uh, you don't want to use it as a crutch, but there's times where you want to make perfectly straight lines. Um, and what you do is you hold this at about a 45 degree angle. Now, again, I'm looking at, you're looking at a left hander here. I rest these knuckles there, put my thumb here on the board and on the paper so it doesn't move on me. I keep it about a 45 degree angle. I ride one or two fingers on top of the railing here. 
You want to hear that ferrule, the metal ferrule hit this wood. And you don't want to reach out. You want to look, get over top of it looking down. And drag, your, drag it like this. And you can make really nice straight lines. So it's a great, great tool to have for straight lines. And you can make long straight lines. A 12 inch one's not big enough. So you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot and pick up a five gallon paint string stick for nothing. But when you do want control, that's a, that's a great to, tool to have right here, five gallon. Once this is dry, I actually actually see a little bit of more of ultra in there and maybe even a just a hint of a violet maybe, but then we'll definitely hit this again. So go back to my color, a little more ultra. All right, test it to see if it's dry. It looks like it's dry. Okay. So I'm just going to come in here again. I could use that straight edge here, but it's big enough I can get by without it. And the barn's got a little bit more value on the left side. There's the sharpest contrast is right at that corner. So I'm just gonna drop a little more pigment in right there. Even make some random vertical strokes. Okay, that's pretty good. We probably used a straight edge, uh, didn't we, before Ivor in one of the workshops? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. So, okay, now it's dry. You can do it freehand. If you're going to do those these lines across your freehand, you're going to want to turn the pad, whichever makes it easiest for you to rest your hand on here and your fingers and slide up. That's pretty much Payne's gray, pretty dark value. So I'm going to come in here. Again, got this in here like this, supporting it here. Run, take a practice run here to make sure I got the stick lined up with that pencil line. Just like that. And then what I can do off of that now, I can have these cracks, these broken boards, what we're seeing into it. And I can just, and it turns, if I go quick, I get that dry brush at the top, which is nice. I don't need to have a solid filled in shape. And as you run out of paint on your brush, you get more of a dry brush effect. And I'll do the same thing on the bottom here a little bit. Let's just throw some in here. Maybe coming up this way. If you do something like that that you don't like, just take a damp, a wet brush and calm it down. But if you just kind of just kind of go like that. My whole side of my hand's resting. So I just go like that. Just go like that. That way you'll get vertical strokes in there. And you can do the same thing on the bottom, some areas here. I'm going to go a little bit darker here still. Just, I'm just going to lay up. And I've actually got some uh, burnt umber, but I got some orange in it too. Um, now I'm going to take the wet brush, just clear water, and just run down that and let it transition into the rest of the building. So it's just a graduation here. Um, and if I feel like I want it a little darker underneath here, the overhang, I can come in here and throw that in there. I think that probably helps too. Okay, that takes care of that. So let's go to the next section here, which would be down below, below the barn here. We're going to go uh, 
orange, a diluted orange color for the stonework. So I'm, and I'm gonna go right over top the windows and the door down there. So I'm gonna come in here just like this, just like this. Fill that whole thing in just quick as you can. I want a nice clean edge at the bottom of that barn though. I, I want to have that hill nice and smooth there. Okay. And again, I'm going to go a little, a little bit darker here like I did with the barn on the corner here. Just drop a little more pigment in it and let it transition out. And the barn actually the wood on the barn sticks out a little bit from the stonework, which means I can have a shadow underneath it right here. Just like that. And once that's dry, I can take my cadmium red and maybe, uh, maybe darken it down a little bit. Let's see what we got here. Cadmium red. Well, that might be too bright for that door. So how, what do I want to do to calm that red down, but still keep it red? But I want to gray it down. What you want to do is you want to just, you don't want to go with Payne's gray or, or blue right here. We just want to calm down a bright red. So I'm just going to take a touch of sap green. And that calms that down quite a bit. Here's where I started right here. It would look for it looked way too bright in there. So I took some sap green, the complementary color, and grayed it down. And I'm painting right over the thickness of the stonework there too, because the darks will go right over top of that. Okay, I got a little bit too orange. I'm just gonna throw a little more red in there. Oh, I'm looking at that now and say, okay, I like that basic color. I'm just gonna throw a little more red. While that's wet, I'm gonna throw some straight red in there. So it still won't be as bright as it was if I hadn't put it into a wet area. I'm going to take a little more sap with my red. And I'm going to create the shadow that the barn, the side of the barn is creating underneath that door there. So I'm just going to come in with a darker value in here. And what'd you put in that, the red, what'd you mix it with? Up for here? Yeah. A little bit of sap green just to gray down the red. Okay. Just a little bit. And as colors dry, they, they dry lighter on you too. So I'm looking at the side of this barn. Um, that's not quite dark enough. So I'm just going to grab some orange and some, lay this in here at the corner anyway. And then I'll take clear water and just transition it out into the rest of the barn. Yeah, I like that better. Now, what I did here is I'm going to have to go darker here once this is dry. Um, but I think what I'll do is I'll put that vertical dark area in first. For that, you can just use any dark value. It can be Payne's gray with a touch of red. It can be just, just a dark, dark color. I'm just going to draw that in, paint that in. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to add a little red to that and go back and redo that area underneath here. Let's just kind of connect these a little bit. All this brush with <clears throat> with some Payne's gray, maybe some burn umber in it, and uh, stroke in these vertical boards in this in this door. And a lot of times, a good way to start is to start here and start going. All of a sudden, you run out of space where they're not the same thickness, the boards, that is. What you do is start in the middle. Start here, like this. Then divide that into half. Then divide that in half again. And you can do that a number of times until you get you know, the right number of boards that you want in there. But start in the middle on something like that. Here's a little latch right there. 
and I'll go with the, the orange here for the thickness of that stone wall. Orange just got a little bit of burnt umber in it, it looks like. But I'm gonna fill that window in with paint gray. Basically black. I'm going to paint that overhang here, this dark overhang, which you see right here. That'll help give dimension to this too, so. A lot of times you know, people think, oh, you can't go back. Well, <clears throat> I thought this was too weak. So I'm hitting it with just a wash of wash of orange. And I think it may have a touch of a brown in it. Look at that side. Do I like that? I think maybe I'll just, while well, that's damp, I'll just tap that out a little bit so it's a little lighter on the right side. That helps separate it from the background here, these dark areas. Drag it, take it vertical, fan it out like that. And then I'm going to come in here, start right on this sticky note. Keep that horizontal. Come in here like this. And throw in some reds. A great way to do it. I could have had my sticky note up a little bit farther, it looks like, <clears throat> but that's not a problem. Bring it all the way over to the edge right there. So I'll take the same colors, <clears throat> put the sticky note at the bottom this time, and sweep up. And I'll slow down and fill it in a little bit more in areas that need it. But, you know, what a great way to put something like that in there. Otherwise, you're slowing down, you're painting the top, and then you're stroking it and painting the bottom. Here we get in and out, and we're done with it. If you leave too much white, <clears throat> you can always take a damp brush, and you can blend some of this together, just a hint. And I, on a smaller size, this is fine here. But when I look at it this size, I really want to put a little texture on it. Very, very dry brush. You can see it right here. I think that would help it. So I'm going to go to my paint spray. There we go. Get all the water out of it almost completely. Because if it's too much water, it won't give you that greeny texture. And uh, let's see if this will work here. So I got a sticky note on here. So I'm just going to come in here and just, just like this, just kind of go at the stop and just go down and stop it. Don't, don't put the brakes on when you get down here because you've got this to protect it. So just come in here. Look how quick you can get that nice, nice texture in there. If I feel like oh, I'm kind of finishing area off here, I'm just going to take just a dab of my titanium white. Make sure I've got clean water.
dip into that very opaque just because I, I don't want it to uh, go milky and, and lose its color. What I'm going to do is on these fence posts here, I'm just I'm supporting my hand here so I can gently put it right on the top. And as they go back farther into space, you aren't going to see it, so we don't really need to go back there. But um, and I actually have a fence post that I didn't put in. There's a fence post right here. Let's, let's use that shape. There we go. that kind of connects right here. So I take a practice run. My whole hand's resting. Now come in just, here's where I want to go. I'll lower the brush down. If I got three of them here, I can do the top one and do the bottom one. Then I know I just go through the middle on the next one. Also, there's a couple of lightning rods on top here. They're, they're, they show up white. This kind of gets lost in here a little bit. And so I'm going to take some paints gray. I'm just going to give a little edge to that, that roof. That cleans that edge up. And I'll do the same thing on this. You can kind of see how that cleans that up. So I'm looking at this door over here. You see, you can go back and forth. Look at this door, and I want to push that a little redder yet. So I'm just going to throw some red on there. You can take that titanium white we had, or that you can use, and you can go in there and you can throw in that window. A little light on top of that latch. So I'm going to take orange, some burnt, burnt sienna, maybe some burnt umber, um, just to indicate the stonework on here. So I'm sure this is dry. Okay, here. I'm just going to take a brush like this. I'm just going to come in here and just support my hand and just put some of these in here. I'm not putting all of them in there. And if your orange is too bright, you can calm that down with a little bit of green too, sap green. Let's just come in here and put a few of those in. I need a medium sized round, a small round brush. I don't have one with a good point on it. Okay, I think that'll do it. Okay, this will work. So I'm not worried about, okay, you got. You know, these br bricks have to be spaced out a certain way. I'm not worried about that. That's too much work. That, that becomes a rendering then. I don't want that. So we're just going to indicate a few of them. That's just a random pattern like that. Just under each one of them, just to get the feeling they're sticking out a little bit. I mean, very, very little. Just a suggestion. You can see how that helps too. I put a, just a value for this overhang area where the, the door is. I'm just going to define that a little bit more so, and the vertical. Just like that. I'm going to take a diluted version of that and just kind of create the bottom of that too. Just like that. Clean your palette out. Mix up those blues for the bottom. 
It's ultramarine blue. It looks like it's got a little pains. It actually looks like there might be a, just a touch of phthalo blue. Phthalo blue is a cool color temperature wise. So that's kind of nice for ice. Give it an icy, snowy feel on it. So clean your palette out. Make sure you got a clean brush. Um, we're going to use a, a big brush. So my bigger mop brush here. Yeah, and what's the colors we were mixing up with? Right down here at the snow? Yeah. Okay, the, I'm going to use some ultramarine blue. I'm going to put a touch of phthalo blue with it. And I, let's just see here. That's actually pretty good. I might put just barely touch my paint's gray, so it's not quite too blue. Touch with that. Yeah. Something like that, Ivor. It's ultramarine blue, a little bit of phthalo blue. Um, we want it to be a pretty blue, a clean blue, though. So it's got, I definitely got, I definitely have phthalo in this. I can really, okay. really see it here. Um, but if you overdo the phthalo, then it becomes very overpowering. So you got to kind of have that kind of creep up when you add the phthalo in there. Again, make sure you mix up a big enough puddle, too. And this is where you're going to want your salt ready and your spray bottle on this. So here we go. Yeah. I go across the bottom. This a little more. I can tell as soon as I did that, I realized I need a little more ultra in there. Remember, it dries a little bit light. Now I'm going to take another brush and straddle those edges. I don't want those to be hard like that. I want them to be soft. So come in here while they're wet and knock them back. You're using just plain water on that? Plain water. Plain water. And this is the time to look at the value you laid in there and think, okay, do I have enough pigment in there? <clears throat> is it going to dry too light or do I like it? If you like it, then don't mess with it. I'm adding a little more ultramarine blue to mine here. I'm not going back up in here, though. I'm going to not touch that. I'm happy with that. And now I'm going to, I'm going to clean up my puddles that are on the tape here on the side. And I'm going to sprinkle this with salt generously. And then I'm going to take my small, small spray bottle here, and I'm not going to shoot down at it. I'm going to kind of come from an angle. I'm not heavy spraying. No. That's, that's all I'm going to do to it. What that does, uh, the, the blue we put down is wet, so that will affect the salt to some degree. But sp uh, spraying that clean water, on, clear water on top of it with that mister really activates the salt. You really get that icy feel. You can see how quickly it's changing down here. So I'm just looking at around at values. Is there something that I can kind of finesse that uh, you know, could, could look better than it is? I might come into the roof here and just kind of throw a little more value in there. Use a small brush and just. I can't really wipe that salt off until it's completely dry. Otherwise, I'll smear it and it'll affect the. Uh, little, appearance of it. I'm getting pretty close. You can kind of tell if it's still wet because it'll be darker around the, the uh, salt. Little specks of salt will be a little bit darker blue. I think I've got this portion up here done. What you want to do is you want to take a dry paper towel and uh, you gotta make sure it's completely dry though. And then wash it off. And you're still probably gonna feel a little bit of salt, but that's normal. So don't worry about that. Just leave that on there. So I'm gonna lay, I'm gonna mix up some colors for the tree. So I'm gonna take uh, Looking at this tree, so I've got some, obviously I've got some ultramarine blue in it. I got burnt umber and burnt sienna in it. Um, I actually see a little bit of raw sienna, I think, which is kind of a nice, it's got, but raw sienna has got a touch more uh, yellow in it. Again, I'll go to my test sheet again here. 
Okay, if I add a little blue to it, what happens? Yeah, let's, let's just go a little darker blue on this side. Just kind of pretend I'm doing the tree there. Look at that. I'm a little more raw sand in there. You can see the difference with raw sand. That's a nice color. Okay, so there's my tree. Um, and a lot of times, just for fun, I'll throw something in there that's out of character. It's kind of fun to do. There's, there's some phthalo green in there. What? I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I'm a mess. <laughs> 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 but I know it because Nancy reminds me all the time. <laughs> but it has interest to it, even though it's, you know, maybe foreign, but um, I see up, up in here, my reference, I see a little bit, it looks like it might even be a touch of a, a phthalo blue maybe. So for those of you that don't like the green, you can put a little phthalo blue maybe. Well, you can have the combination. I kind of like the combination myself. We don't want to just pick one color and paint the tree. Or trees are brown, or trees are gray and brown, uh, or trees are just you know black or whatever. That's more interest to it, especially if it's a tree that's in the foreground. Um, it's uh, it's fun to play with that, and uh, and that big tree is, is an important element in the scene too. So let's just you know that's that's kind of the tree right there. I managed to make mud, so I got to. Well, yeah. Well, if you mix them around too much, you will get mud. Yeah, you gotta be careful you don't mix them too much. Kind of lay them in nice and wet and juicy and then just kind of get out of the way. Okay. So I'm gonna start my tree here. I'm just gonna lay a value in here. It's not our color. It's not the right color yet. When I look at this, I look at, well, I see, I see a little bit of violet in here. Let's put that in. There's some ultramarine blue. Kind of bring that tree up like that. I definitely see some burnt umber in here. Spots. I'm just going to kind of fill it in a little bit with a lighter, but just mostly water right now because I want the right side of the tree to be the darkest. That's the side that's on sh in shadow. And if it, it's kind of, kind of a heavy right here, I'm just going to take a damp brush and just maybe pull out some color in a few spots, you know. More into the paint's gray now. I burn umber. Kind of drop these colors in. Kind of let them do all the work. A little more ultramarine blue on the side here. I want that shadow side to be darker. Maybe I want it a little bit lighter in here, maybe. Let's just see here. Let's just wet it and tap it out and bring some of the light values back in here. Again, we can do this when the tree's dry too, which is kind of fun, like we did before. We can pull out some, some shapes. I'm just gonna put some of these branches in. And decide, do I wanna put that branch here or it would be more interesting to have it come from here and having that little window in there for the hill to show up. Go for it.
if you notice how I hesitate on my strokes, I come up here and slightly change direction. Push down hard and let up on the pressure so the branch gets thinner as it goes out. Here's where I can go with my small script brush for the delicate branches in here. So you can change the arrangement of the branches. Just tie them into the tree. They don't go, they connect with the tree and they kind of round it on the bottom, especially. We don't want them to come in there stiff. They got to flow into the, into the trunk. You know, you put in tree branches, you're gonna definitely gonna have some that you don't like. But by the time you put more in there, no one's gonna notice that one that you think is kind of strange, except for you. So I weighed that tree in, it's pretty heavy, which is, this is what I wanted. Now I'm gonna take a flat brush or a round brush and uh, bring some light to the sunlit side of the tree. So I'm just gonna scrub it with a damp brush, fairly wet brush actually. And then I'll, I'll tap it out when I think I've kind of got what I want. See what it looks like. Put some more pigment in there. Sometimes I'll just take the brush and go somewhat horizontal and get some strokes in there. It kind of gives an interesting texture to the tree as opposed to just going vertical and pulling it all out. It's like anything else. If you do too much, well, you put back in and fill it back in. But make sure I got a clean spot on my palette. A clean brush. Because we've got to anchor this tree to the to the foreground here. So I'm going to mix up my blue here. Ultra a touch of phthalo. Um, Test it on my sheet here. That's not dark enough. I'm going to ask to put a touch of Payne's in that with it too. Payne's gray. Okay, that's better. Payne's gray or Prussian, Prussian blue will work good. So what I want to do, we don't have very far to go. The important thing is get this angle right. We don't want it over here. We don't want it way over here because then we're running over here. We want to come from here. Find my pencil. Coming from here, we're coming over to about, about here, about this area. So when I'm starting here, I'm, I just, in my peripheral vision, I see where I want to stop here. So, so what I want to do before I just go crazy here, I want to go in here and I want to loosen up the trunk because I don't want to see the bottom of the trunk. I want that to just transition right into the, into the shadow. What colors are you using for that? Got, I've got some ultramarine blue, touch of phthalo, and a little bit of paints. Thank you. Yeah. So once I think I've loosened it up, and I may not have loosened it up enough, but then I'm going to take my brush, fan it out, 
I'll draw a little bit of tail of the shadow here. Just it here. Yeah. A little more blue. That's pretty close. So this is nice and wet here now. There's a puddle right down there and that's what I wanted. And I'm hoping I loosened up the base of that tree enough. But I'm gonna take my brush, take it vertically, fan it out like that and pay attention to where I need to go with this. And I'm going to kind of start it here. And then I'm gonna take the brush and go right to here real quick. Okay, fan it out. Real quick, just like that. I have another brush ready that's clean. Straddle the top and straddle the bottom. I just splattered a little water in it, just break it up a little bit. And I've got a little more space here than I do in this. Um, so I think I've kind of got this empty hole here, but I see here, there's a tree I have here. There's a big tree over here off the page. It's over here somewhere. Well, that big tree is gonna throw shadows in here. There. So now it tells us that there's a, a, another tree that's off to the left, off of the page. And it, it puts something in that spot since mine's bigger here. I think what I'll do just for fun here is I'm, I'm going to take some titanium white, a good size round brush, some clean water. I'm going to mix up that titanium white. If you put too much water with it, it's going to look good when you put it on but then it's going to gray out because there's not enough pigment in it. So you got to, you really need to pretty much test it on a piece of scrap paper and see what it's going to do for you. I think I'm going to be okay there. So now my drops are really big at first here. Um, so what I do for something like this is I kind of, kind of tap it, get most of the paint out of it. So I don't have big, big, big drops on there. So it's getting down to a medium sized drop. Now that's pretty good. Then what I do is I get up high. I get way up here. I'm about eight, 10 inches off the board. And I don't just, I, what I do is I move around as I do it. I go like, and then you get a more even pattern. Running out of paint here, okay. A little more paint. Test it on my scrap piece, okay. That's watercolor or gouache? It's, it, well, it's, it's called watercolor, but it is, it's basically gouache. Any kind of got white, it has some opacity to it. And it has a little more opacity than yellow ochre does.